Good evening and welcome to this, our evening prayer, the first evening prayer of George. And so we will be using different prayers this evening. In our red book, we will be using the evening prayer for all saints until Advent, which can be found on page 297. You will need the responses open as well on page 464. And our uh, psalm this evening will be Psalm 111, which can be found on page 819. If you are using the Daily Prayer Common Worship app, you will need to select the tab, which is for the first evening prayer of George and follow the service through from there. So let us take a moment's silence as we gather our souls into our Father's presence. And so we begin our prayer this evening on page 297, evening prayer from All Saints Day until the Friday before the first Sunday of Advent. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. Now, as darkness is falling, wash away our transgressions. Cleanse us by your refining fire. And make us temples of your Holy Spirit. By the light of Christ, dispel the darkness of our hearts and make us ready to enter your kingdom, where songs of praise forever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. If you have the words, do join in with me as we say together. Give me the wings of faith to rise within the veil and sea. The saints above, how great their joys how bright their glories be. Once they were mourning here below and wet their couch with tears, they wrestled hard as we do now with sins and doubts and fears. I ask them whence their victory came. They with united breath ascribe their conquest to the Lamb, their triumph to his death. They mark the footsteps that he trod his zeal inspired their breast, and following their incarnate God, possess the promised rest. Our glorious leader claims our praise for his own pattern given, while the long cloud of witnesses show the same path to heaven. that this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And so we turn to Psalm 111, which in the Red Book can be found on page 819. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. We'll say this antiphonally. I'll say the odd verses if you say the even verses. 
Alleluia, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and honour. His righteousness endures forever. He appointed a memorial for his marvellous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gave food to those who feared him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He showed his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his commandments are sure. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. They stand fast for ever and ever. They are done in truth and equity. He has sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant for ever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have those who live by it. His praise endures for ever. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Gracious God, you are full of compassion. May we who long for your kingdom to come rejoice to do your will and acknowledge your power alone to save through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And we come now to our first reading from Scripture. This evening coming from Jeremiah, chapter 15, verses 15 to 21. O Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me. And bring down retribution on me, for me, on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone. For you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing? My wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is not they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to his, this people a fortified wall of bronze, that they will fight against you but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you 
from the grasp of the ruthless. And so we come to the canticle on page 299. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. We have come before God's holy mountain to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. We have come before countless angels making festival, before the assembly of the first born citizens of heaven. We have come before God who is judge of all, before the spirits of the just made perfect. We have come before Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So let us give thanks and offer to God acceptable worship, full of reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. So we come to our second reading from Scripture, this evening coming from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 32 through to chapter 12, verse 2. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephatha, of David and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goat, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these... Through, yet all these, through they, though they were commended but for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. And so we come to our responsory on page 300. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. And so we come to the Magnificat on this, the eve of St George's Day, and we will use the response that is found on page 464. So please do stand if you are able. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Alleluia. And so we come to our time of intercession. We begin by giving thanks for today, for all that we have done, been, experienced, for those times when we have recognised God at work in our life and in the lives of others. So let us pause and bring our own thanks to our Father for the days that we have experienced. Lord God, we thank you for today. We thank you for what it still holds for us as we come to the evening of the day. Help us, Lord, to be attentive of you for the rest of the day and to know your presence with us in all that we experience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we think about coronavirus, the thing that is absorbing so much of our attention, so much of the time, we pray for those who are struggling with this crisis both near and far. Reach out, Lord, today to the frightened, anxious about themselves or their loved ones. Hold them and help them. Reach out to the isolated, the lonely, the vulnerable. Hold them and help them. Reach out to the sick, those wrestling with the symptoms of coronavirus, those whose situation is complicated by underlying health conditions. 
help them and hold them. Reach out to those who are ministering to the afflicted, offering support, comfort and treatment as best they can, but hampered by limited resources and the scale of the crisis. Hold them and help them. Reach out to the bereaved, those mourning family and friends, their love and companionship snatched away. Hold them and help them. Reach out to those affected financially, those who have lost jobs and livelihoods, the future they took for granted now under threat. Hold them and help them. Reach out to the countries of our world so badly affected by this virus. Countries including China and South Korea, Israel and Palestine, the United States of America, Canada, Italy, France, Spain, Iran, Switzerland, and ourselves, and the many other places in the world that are seeing increases in, in infections and facing that imminent catastrophe in turn. Help them, hold them, reach out, Lord, to a world in need, a world teetering on the edge of chaos, on the brink of disaster. Hold us and help us all. Amen. And so we take a moment of silence to pray for those situations that are most touching our hearts at this moment. Lord, mercy, hear our prayer. And today on International Earth Day, the 50th anniversary of that day, the day that started in 1970 with just a few people feeling that the earth was heading for crisis and that we needed to do something to celebrate it, to sustain it and to support it. And so we pray for all those people over that, those past 50 years who have worked tirelessly to care for this planet to care for the creation that God made us stewards of. For those people who have led the way in the past and lead the way now. And so we pray for all who've been involved in the climate change rallies and protests in these last 18 months. Pray Lord that as this coronavirus has cleared much of the pollution around your world because we've not been using cars, we've not been using so much transport, we've not been flying here, there and everywhere, and for many other more complicated reasons. We pray that the impact that's positively been made on creation will continue beyond the end of coronavirus. And so we take a moment of silence to pray.
pray our own prayers around the creation of this world. And if you have the postcard from the Diocese of St Albans or you have the prayer, the Living God's Love Prayer, I invite you to join with me in saying together, Living God, draw us deeper into your love. Jesus, our Lord, send us to care and serve. Holy Spirit, make us heralds of good news. Stir us, strengthen us, teach and inspire us to live your love with generosity and joy, imagination and courage for the sake of your world and in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so we pray for the vulnerable, the sick, the dying and the bereaved. Lord, to people everywhere at this troubled time, give a spirit of responsibility, compassion and community, of concern for the greater good and a willingness to put themselves out for the sake of others. To those who fear or know they are carrying the virus, help them to isolate themselves for however long is required. No matter how difficult that may feel for them. To those at risk, conscious of the symptoms taking hold of them, and spiring, spiralling out of control. Give reassurance, support and the best possible care that they may return safe and well to their loved ones. To those in intensive care, on ventilators, in evident distress, not responding to their treatment give strength and succour, and should it come to it, a peaceful end. To those mourning loved ones, life cruelly plucked away, give comfort, comfort in their shock, their numbness, their despair, and sustain them through the darkness. To our suffering world, Lord, in so much turmoil, bring hope, help and health. Amen. And so we pray individually for those people who have been given us as names to pray for. Some people are people we've been praying for for a long time for other health issues. Some we're praying for because they have contracted coronavirus. And so we pray for Edit, Alison, Diana, Alan, for Diane, Leslie, Josie, and Edith. For Michael, Moira, Jane and Elsie. For Karen, Madge, 
David and John. For Patricia, Annette and Euthan. For Imala, Leonora, Maureen and Raf. For Tony, Diana, Leslie's son and for Dallas. That is now named before our father, any others known to us. Loving Father, we pray for healing for all of the, those people we have named. Lord God, we know that there are so many more who are in need of our prayers and we pray that others are praying for them by name. But we include them in our prayers, knowing that they are known to you. So Heavenly Father, bring your healing onto these people. Enable them to sustain all that they need to deal with. To know they are well cared for, to know they are loved by you and by their family and friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray now for those who have departed this life, for those who are mourned, for those whose family and friends are disturbed and in anguish, for the anxiety this causes. And so we pray for Janet Kitely, Jean Liston, Ron Coles, and Richard. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. And as we come to the end of our prayers this evening, if you have the, our prayer for mission, I invite you to join with me in saying, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love and gifts you have poured upon us. Be among, give us confidence and encouragement in all we do to share your love. May we walk always in the steps of Jesus. Help us to provide a warm welcome to all who long to know you. We pray that we may respond with a desire to share more of the love of Christ. Amen. God of hosts, who so kindled the flame of love in the heart of your servant George, that he bore witness to the risen Lord by his life and by his death, Give us the same faith and power of love that we who rejoice in his triumphs may come to share with him the fullness of the resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven as our Saviour taught us so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May Christ who has opened the kingdom of heaven Bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>